So uh, uh, my name is Denise Levine, and I'm a student here at Tacoma, Tacoma Community College. Um, I am currently taking art history with Jennifer, and also a, uh, an independent study with Marit Berg in printmaking. Um, so I'm here to talk about my painting, uh, Blue Point, which I completed last quarter in an advanced painting class with Melinda. Um, was mostly inspired by my Siamese cat. I have, actually have two, but this is the only photo I have of the one. And he's a Blue Point Siamese, which is where that name comes from. Blue points tend to be kind of a blue-gray color. So there he is. Um, I was also working from a, uh, a black and white photo that I found on the internet, which was a, a cat coming in the window. And, um, you know, just decided to work with that. Um, so this painting is actually a part of a series of experiments that I uh, did in Melinda's class. Um, we kind of came up with this in the first couple of weeks. Uh, she had me bring in a painting that I had been working on that I had worked on previously and um, we just kind of discussed the things that I was struggling with and um, settled down on a few things um, that I wanted to work on this quarter. So. Um, you know, we put together some experiments to, to work on those things, and they were um, achieving a wider range of value in my paintings, um, learning how to paint more abstractly and a little bit more loosely, and uh, also did a lot of experimenting with glazing and uh, working with skin tones. So this painting was essentially, you know, kind of all those things, a combination of all these experiments. It was. Uh, if you, I'm sure some of you have been working in painting right now are, are learning about value and how value is, it's like a range of light to dark. Um, and for me, I just seem to always struggle getting a wide range of value. I, I found that all my paintings turned out to be incredibly light. And I wouldn't even know that that was the case until all of the students, we all put our paintings next to each other and I'd be like, wait a minute, mine is like the lightest one up there. And it just happened time after time. So I just think it's, it's partly, for me, it's like a mental thing, like to get, um, to take a white canvas and put a really dark color on it was kind of scary in a way. It's like, like the contrast is so big and it's, it's like making such a huge statement. It's, for me, it was kind of intimidating. So um, one of the experiments was working with a black canvas and that's what this was done on. I, I did this on a black canvas and I used it more like a mental tool. You know, if I start off with something black, I now have the darkest value I could possibly have. So went from basically dark all the way to light. And um, I'd say that that experiment has been useful for me because it definitely makes me more, has made me more comfortable with, I guess, having that darker value, which I didn't really feel comfortable with before. So. Um, so pretty much all quarter I was working with um, black canvas, tinted ground, tinting the canvas different colors. Uh, we made our own frames and stretched the canvas, painting them with all different kinds of gesso and stuff. So you know, it was really like a quarter of experimentation. So it was really, really a great experience for me. Um, so any questions so far at all? Okay. Yeah, it's acrylic, yeah. So um, another experiment that we were working on was, uh, I guess, abstraction and painting more loosely. Um, I find that I'm, I have this compulsion to try and fix things all the time and I have to paint everything exactly how I see it and all the lines have to be perfect and it's like OCD or something, but um, it's like how do you, step out of that comfort zone. Um, so it's still really hard. I, I um, something, uh, I have a couple other experiments that I'd like to try to sort of ease out of that, but this was one of those. And uh, Melinda suggested, you know, if I wanted to learn how to paint less exact and less precise, you know, I should only use really large paintbrushes. So I gave all of my little tiny paintbrushes to my daughter and I, basically only used um, 
I think the smallest paintbrush I have is like an inch wide now. But, you know, so now I can't do really, really precise, precise painting, but somehow I did find that I, <laughs> no matter what, I, I learned how to paint really, you know, straight lines with like a really big brush, but that's okay, I'm getting there. But that, that was kind of this, the idea here in the, in the rectangles here, I'm trying to do, um, I guess, less precise, more abstract. And same thing with the color. The color was, was part of that idea as well. It's like abstracting the color um, and not, you know, trying to step away a little bit from the realism, which is what I'm more comfortable with, but I'd really like to work on being a little looser with that. Um, and it was interesting, actually, because uh, back to the black canvas thing, it was like something that happened to me was the windows with a black canvas. When you're painting, I think if I had started with a white canvas, I would have thought, okay, well, I, what color am I gonna do the windows? And I would choose you know, some paint color to paint this rectangular shape. But for whatever reason, when I'm doing it on black canvas, in my head I'm thinking, okay, this is a hole in the wall, this is a, a window. It's basically a hole, it's a black hole. And I didn't even think that I could paint that rectangle a color. I mean, it was a strange kind of mess up in my head and like, you know, but so I ended up like keeping the black hole and, and taking a lighter, less opaque paint and sort of softening the look of that window, which I learned from Frank DiPolito is called scumble. It's a technique that they use to soften an image by using like a, like an, a lighter paint, just painted more thinly brushed over it. So that was an interesting technique that I, I don't know, did by accident. Um, and I guess that takes me to the glazing as well, which is a similar technique. It's like taking a, um, taking a transparent medium that you're mixing with your paint to thin it out, but you're not really changing the color in any way. You're just, um, you know, reducing the opacity. opacity. Um, and what that does for you, you can use that glaze to either change the value in a subtle way, change the texture sometimes, change the hue and the intensity. And so if you mix either white or black paint to any color, it automatically kills the intensity of that color. I don't know if you guys have tried doing that. You, you mix white with your red or white with your blue, you end up with sort of like a pastel, kind of chalky white uh, color. And I didn't really want a white, uh, a pastel blue cat. I was looking to have this sort of luminous blue cat, and that's what the glazing did for me. So I basically painted the blue cat and did all the shadows and the, and the value differences in there, pretty much almost as light as I wanted it to get it, and then took the, the blue glaze on it and glazed on top of that so you can raise the intensity of the blue and make it more of that glowing blue as opposed to that pastel blue. I don't know if that makes any sense, but here. It's like kind of the difference between a white pastel blue, which is the value I wanted, but then if you take a blue glaze and paint over it, it brings back that intensity of blue. And you can do that without changing the value too much. I mean, it will always darken it, but you can, I can even probably just do this on white same way. So you still maintain the, the brilliant blue without having it be, you know, that pastel color. So that's that. And I um, you know what else can I say about it. But um, I think all in all, all these like different experiments with, you know, glazing and uh, the trying to be looser, um, the black canvas thing. I mean, it's been an incredibly um, educational experience. I mean, I think whenever you have that opportunity to like really try totally new things that you're uncomfortable with and, you know, I mean, some of the things were horrible, just like absolute failures or whatever, but it was just, you know, still a pretty, pretty amazing experience. So, I don't know. Do you have any other, any questions at all or? Hmm. I just wanted to comment. I really like the shape of the cat. Instantaneously, you can see it's cat, but it's so. When you start looking at it, it's like everything. Is that really all white? 
fit together. So that makes it kind of abstract, I think, in mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, have, I think I've always admired uh, this, that skill of many people to like, to just abstract either shapes and, and colors. I mean, I think the shape thing, I, I'm not quite ready to do that. I'm not ready to um, do an abstract shape of a cat. I mean, it's something I would like to eventually get to. And uh, um, actually, Marit um, had a good suggestion. Marit Berg, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. She's, the, she's teaching, I'm taking her printmaking class. Um, but she had a great suggestion I haven't tried yet. But um, she suggested I limit my, um, the time that I will spend on a painting to just three hours. So I need to complete the painting in three hours and put my paintbrushes down. That's it. And it's forcing me to kind of, you know, it's, it's probably going to end up being more gesture-like, I think. You know, the gesture drawing where it's more, you know, quick feeling rather than, and, and you don't have any time to fuss and fix and make things, you know, exactly representational or perfect. Um, and just like you get a, a looser feel, I suppose. And that's kind of what I'd like to try to do. And, um, you know, I, I do find that when I draw gesturally in, in like the quick sketches, and I, I stay pretty often, I actually like that drawing much better than the finished product. So um, it's like that fussing and, you know, sometimes spending so much time, it, it can just, I think it can sometimes take away, you end up doing too much or, or whatever. So it's like sometimes just letting it go or even taking a break from it, stepping back from it for, you know, really far back, looking at it in different kinds of light. Um, you know, you, you definitely see different things in it that you, you don't necessarily do when you're just like right up against it and, and never, you know, stepping back, so. Um. Some of these students here are drawing students, and um, how much drawing preparation do you generally, and you mentioned drawing, how much drawing do you usually do when you're preparing for um, a painting? Um, how much, um, what kinds of, when you get an idea, how do you go about taking that idea from the idea to the finished product? Well, I. For myself, you know, I tend to work a lot from photographs, which is okay sometimes, you know, but I would at some point like to be able to just take something, you know, conceptually out of my head, you know, no photograph necessary and, and draw something that way. You know, for me, I still need, okay, um, there was a painting I did last, the other quarter and involved a couple of people sitting at a dining room table, but I needed to have, okay, uh, a model. So I took a dozen photographs of a couple of different people from different angles, and I was taking photographs from the internet, like how to, you know, what does a person look like when you're looking at them from under the table? What does, you know, and sort of trying to piece these things together. It was hard, and I, I, I would say in some respects it was successful, in others it was not. It was like, um, I think it's just something I got to work on. But as far as like how detailed my sketches are, in this case, I think I was incredibly, um, at least with the cat, you know, it was very, very precise, had that, you know, image down. And, and other paintings I've done, it's like, I, you know, I do the whole grid, you know, the photograph did the grid and gridded this out so I can get a pretty accurate, um, you know, image there. But I wouldn't say that that's, I mean, I think that's, it's a good skill to have, but I would also like to be able to do something much looser and much kind of like let it um, evolve as you go, you know, but I think that's going to take a lot more practice on my part, so if that makes any sense. So that was my question. Was it from a photograph? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it was a black and white photo I found of a cat coming in the window and, uh, you know, I wouldn't... Um, you know, it's, it was it, it was more like a, um, I guess, you know, I, th I think that part of it was I was trying to find black and white photos mainly so I couldn't um, just more easily 
change the colors up to anything I want. Because so, uh, sometimes I think that image when you're, especially when you're taking a picture of your own cat and trying to do, you know, a painting of your own cat, and the moment it starts not looking like your cat, uh, it's, it gets, you know, it's hard to fight that compulsion. It's like, it's got to fix it. It's not like sunny. It's not like whatever. It's, you know, and this way, it's like a black and white photo of a cat I don't know, but, you know, and I can sort of just more easily throw in a different color and, and mess with that, so. But, anyway. That's about it. Anyone else? No? Just like to comment that you've got an incredible amount of movement just a very simple drawing. Thank you. I mean, I, I think uh, I think one of the challenges here was trying to make sure that the the building in the background remained a building in the background and not, you know, so detailed that it took over the painting. I mean, the cat being the main focus and putting as much, you know, more detail, more highlights, more, I guess, you know. I actually, you know, I glazed this entire painting with blue because I wanted blue in everything. You know, even over over here. Um, so it was like quite an exercise in, in, the, in the glazing thing. I think um, if you haven't done it or tried it before, um, it's actually pretty versatile. I mean, you can take um, a black and white and put colored glaze on it to change the color, change the value, and you can you know, put different colored glazes on top of other colors and change just the tone, change the texture, um, and you still are able to, I don't know, it just gives a little bit more depth to it as well, um, and in very, very subtle ways. Um, I think one of the things I had wanted to learn last quarter was how to do skin tones. And uh, I mean, it's like, how do you paint skin without it looking like plastic? How do you put shadow on skin without making it look like they have a really bad tan? I mean, that's pretty much what they look like for me in the past. Um, I would say I, I still don't really know how to do it. I'm still you know, working on that, playing with that. But the glazing thing and that technique of either using sort of a transparent layer on top of another color, whether it be black or something else, some other base color you choose, I mean, it gives, I think for me, that it's easier to get a more believable skin just because you know, when we look at our hand or whatever, there's like a million colors in there. It's like blue and red and pink. It's not just one flat color. So having that glaze, you can have so many different layers that show through and it's not just one plain flesh tone. So, I mean, that was kind of part of what this was about. It's like how to achieve that, that uh, depth of color and not have it look plastic. So and it's just something that I think I've always struggled with, especially with acrylic. I haven't tried any other medium, but it's my understanding like oils are a little bit more, I guess, versatile in like creating that depth of color. And acrylic, you can do it, but you need to do it with like, I think a glazing and scumble and all these other sort of thinned out, you know, things. I mean, because sometimes you add, you know, you could basically cover this with, you know, white, you're not gonna see anything underneath it. It's like completely, uh, obscured. So that glazing thing is just, uh, I think it's something that's, you know, I think we, it's a great technique. So, hi Frank. How are you? Very good, thanks. Oh uh, no, it's all right. We talked about the, the scumble. It was Frank actually who pointed that out to me. I, I was confused between scumble and, and glazing. It's a pretty similar in some respects, but you know, they both definitely work in in you know, I think different ways, but thank you, Frank. <laughs> Appreciate it. So Lisa. I just have one more silly question. Mm -hmm. I know that was probably your signed work to pick the colors that way. Uh no. I mean that was like another again it was like another it was just an experiment, you oh, know. So you chose the to not do it realistically. Right. I mean, like, the, it's like the entire quarter was, you know, hey, what do you want to work on? I'm like, well, you know, I want to work on skin toes or I want to work on, you know, whatever. And 
it was just a completely, you know, let's try this, you know, let's, you know, just, um, which it, it's, I guess all my classes up till that point was always, were always this very um, structured, you know, this is the assignment, everybody does this, this, and this, and, and they work really well. And then she says, well, you know, what do you want to work on? And I, I was, I, I say, I was pretty, like, honestly, kind of anxious about it, because, you know, what do I know? Uh, I don't really know, I didn't feel like I knew enough to, um, I guess, come up with my own lesson plan for myself. But I found that, you know, I'm just gonna relax, I'm gonna try a couple different things, and like I said, some of them worked, some of them did not. <laughs> was like very uncomfortable, oh gosh, but, um, but definitely, um, you know, I think I learned more in that quarter than, you know, in many other classes in within, so it was great. So, oh, thank you. Thank you.